Hi everyone. For today's topic, let us have market demand. At the end of the lesson, the learners should be able to understand the concept of demand and price, analyze the law of demand, and enumerate the non-price determinants of demand. Before we proceed to our discussion, let us try to answer the following questions. 1. Which of the following statements refers to demand? A. A relationship between the price of a product and the quantity demanded during a given period. B. It refers to a quantity of a good or service consumers would choose to buy at a particular price. C. It shows the number of goods that consumers are willing and able to buy. D. All of the above. The answer is A. A relationship between the price of a product and the quantity demanded during a given period. 2. Which of the following statements does not describe the law of demand? A. It shows the relationship between price and quantity demanded. B. There is a negative relationship between price and quantity demanded. C. Price is directly affected by quantity demanded. D. None of the above. The answer is C. Price is directly affected by quantity demanded. 3. Which of the following is true about ceteris paribus? A. It is only focused on market demand. B. It refers to factors of demand shift. C. It means that all other things held constant. D. None of the above. The answer is C. It means that all other things held constant. 4. Which of the following scenarios causes the demand to shift upward? A. Consumers are satiated with product. B. Increase in consumers' income. C. The price is expected to decrease next week. D. None of the above. The answer is B. Increase in consumers' income. 5. Which of the following factors does not cause a shift in the demand curve? A. Price. B. The income of consumers. C. Expectations of future prices. D. None of the above. The answer is A. Price. We let's check if you still remember our lesson last time. Enumerate the causes of unemployment and poverty. Economics, as per definition, it deals with human behavior and how people interact with each other in a society. Hence, it is important to know how individuals make choices out of the resources available. In the market and mixed economy, we discussed that individuals are free to choose whatever they want to buy. There are many factors which signal them to buy a certain product. However, price is the main indicator why consumers purchase a good or service. Today we will discuss the relationship of the price with the consumer's buying power. Demand is an economic principle referring to a consumer's desire to purchase goods and services and a willingness to pay a price for a specific good or service. If we are talking about market demand, it is defined as the willingness and ability of consumers to buy different quantities of goods or services at any given time at various possible prices. 
Because of scarcity, you cannot get all what you want. Even if you have enough money to pay for a new dress, you might decide not to buy it because it defies you with an opportunity cost. There's a great opportunity cost as the price of a product gets higher, the less likely that you will buy. Since price influences our buying decision, consumers are hesitant to buy products at a higher price. Price is the amount of money that has to be paid to acquire a given product. The number of units of a good that individuals are willing and able to buy a particular price during a particular period is called quantity demanded. As price increases, ceteris paribus, quantity demanded decreases, this principle is called the law of demand. There is a negative relationship between price and quantity demanded. Price and quantity demanded are regularly observed to be negatively related for two reasons. Substitution effect, as the price of a good increase relative to the price of the other goods, the opportunity cost of buying that good increases, and consumers will switch to substitutes other goods that can be used in its place. Income effect, as the price of a good rises and income remains the same, consumers, who could no longer afford to buy all the things that they used to buy, would normally buy less of the good whose price has been increased. Demand schedule is a table showing the quantities of a product that would be purchased at various prices at a given time and place. Table 1 contains a hypothetical schedule of the demand for sandwiches in a local market during school days. The left column shows the various prices while on the right column shows the number of units which consumers would choose to buy at a given price. As observed, as the price rises, the quantity demanded declines. Demand curve is a graph showing the quantities of a product that would be purchased at various prices at a given time. The market demand curve for sandwiches is a graphical representation of a demanding schedule for sandwiches. As shown in Figure 1, the price is scaled on the graph's vertical axis and quantity on the horizontal axis. Each point on the curve shows the number of sandwiches that consumers would choose to buy at a particular. In situation A, at 30 pesos consumers would buy 20 sandwiches. Situation B represents the combination of 40 sandwiches at 40 pesos while in situation C, consumers will buy 60 sandwiches at 20 pesos and so on. When we connect all these points, we obtain the market curve, labeled as D this represents as demand curve. The market demand curve slopes downward towards the right. A downward sloping demand curve reflects the observed negative relationship between price and quantity, law of demand. As the price decreases, the quantity demanded increases, and vice versa. Since the assumption is that price is the only factor that affects the quantity demanded, for every price change, there is a movement along the demand curve. When the price of sandwiches falls from 25 pesos to 20 pesos, the number of units demanded by consumers rises from 40 to 60. There is a movement along the demand curve from point B to C. We have discussed earlier that price is the only factor that determines the quantity of a good or service that consumers choose to buy. Demand can be also affected by other factors other than price, which is known as non-price determinants. The non-price determinants are Income of consumers Tastes or preferences of consumers Number of buyers Prices of related goods And expectations of future prices When these factors change, there is a shift in the entire demand curve. Figure 2 shows the shifts in the market demand curve that results from a change in one of the non-price factors. The rightward shift from D1 to D2 implies an increase in demand. Consumers would likely buy more sandwiches at every price. For example, they would choose to buy 80 instead of 60 sandwiches at 20 pesos. An increase in demand is an increase in the number of units that consumers would choose to buy at every price. The leftward shift from D1 to D3 represents a decrease in demand. Consumers would choose to buy less sandwiches at every price. For example, they would choose to buy 40 instead of 60 sandwiches at 20 pesos. A decrease in demand is a decrease in the number of units that consumers would choose to buy at each and every price. Individual income may change depending upon the economic situation.
An increase in income leads consumers to buy more goods at every price. A decrease in income leads consumers to buy fewer goods at every price. There are two types of goods as income basis. Normal and inferior goods. For normal goods, demand increases as income increases. If the sandwich is a normal good, an increase in income leads to an increase in demand for sandwiches. For inferior goods, demand decreases as income increases. An increase in income may lead some consumers to buy less sandwiches because they can now afford to buy other better products like hamburgers or pizza. An increase in the likeness of the people place on sandwiches would lead them to buy more sandwiches at every price. When people become more aggressive to try new snacks, some of the consumers might choose to buy fewer hamburgers at each and every price. As the population gets bigger, the demand also increases. Metro Manila has a greater demand because there are many consumers compared to other provinces. Substitute goods. As the price of a good increase the demand for that good decreases and its substitute good will increase. Sandwiches and hamburgers are substitute goods. If the price of sandwiches increases, consumer leads to buy fewer sandwiches and buys more hamburgers. Complementary goods. As the price of a good increase the demand for that good decreases and the complementary good also decreases. Sandwiches and drinks are complementary goods. If the price of sandwiches increases, the demand for sandwiches decreases and so with the drinks. If people expect the price of sandwiches to rise next week. Consumers may buy more hamburgers now and consume fewer later on. If people expect the price of a sandwich to fall next week. They may buy fewer sandwiches now and buy more later on. For your activity. Please read the directions. You may answer this after watching the video. To summarize what you have learned in the lesson, answer the following questions. 1. What is demand? 2. What is the law of demand? 3. What are the causes of demand shifts? For you, what is the most important factor to consider when buying a product? Why? Explain your answer. Let us check if you have learned something today. Please answer the post-test.